نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم مكروا ومكر الله والله خير الماكرين وقال عز وجل ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حذ عظيم وقال عز وجل خذوا خذرتك خذركم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين يا رب The first thing I want to start off with is that you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pray regularly اللهم ارنا الاشياء كما هي Oh Allah, show me things as they really are. Allahumma arina al-ashiyah kama hiya or Allahumma arina al-hakikat al-ashiyah. Show us the reality of things. Also a very famous dua of the Prophet ﷺ on the same topic is Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqq. Oh Allah, show us the truth as truth. Warzubna al-tiba. And give us the ability to follow it. Once we see the truth, then we can follow it. وَأَرِنَا الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلَ And show us the falsehood is falsehood. وَرْزُقْنَا اجْتِنَابَ And help us to stay away from it. So whenever we Muslims, we are confronted with any situation, we seek Allah's protection and Allah's guidance, and we look at what the Qur'an teaches us, what the prophetic model teaches us, about any situation that we come to, or we find ourselves in. And so you've all heard about the situation that's happened in New Zealand. And so there are some thoughts, and I think I have, I'm going to try to go quickly, but I have a lot of thoughts that I want to share with you. I want to share with you, first of all, the big picture, the big picture, what's actually happening. And uh, then from that big picture, then I want to talk about other aspects that relate to this whole situation. And remember, nothing is an isolated event. Uh, Muslims are going through many, many events. And not all of these events are isolated. A lot of them are interconnected with one another. And so looking at just one event in an, as an isolated event uh, doesn't do justice to the bigger picture. The first thing I want to start with is that Fir'aun, you know, he was, uh, he was scared that his people, that are the Qibti people, that they rule Egypt but they don't have enough, the population of the other people, the Bani Israel was growing very large. And what he was scared of was the demographics. He was scared of the demographics of Bani Israel getting too large. And so therefore, what he started to do is, يَقْتُلُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ They started killing your boys and letting go the girls. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in another part of the Qur'an, Allah even says that when Allah will help you, one of the ways Allah will help you, وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ And Allah will increase you in children and in wealth. This is one of the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping you. And so you find this like in, uh, in different parts of the Qur'an, particularly like Surah Al-Isra, where uh, Allah talks about the revival of the Ummah of Bani Israel when they had gone to a down, down path and they were going to come back up through the Maccabi power, through Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam, it was to amdadnaakum bi amwalin wa banin. So anyway, so here we are, uh, and what the people, this, uh, this gentleman who did the killing, I forget his name right now, uh, he was, uh, you know, the people that influenced his thinking, uh, I'm going to talk about them in a second, but uh, one of them, uh, his name is Ander Brevik. He was uh, one of the, um, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, uh, um, he was a terrorist, uh, but he had these ideas uh, that not only he has, but a lot of the people in Europe have, and a lot of the people in America have. And that is that, what are we going to do with the growing presence of Muslims? It is, it is what they are calling a demographics jihad. A jihad 
that Muslims are waging by simply increasing in number. In jihad, Muslims are increasing simply by being more. And this is a threat to them because they see the white population becoming less and the minorities, including Muslims and others, becoming more. And they see America changing. And because of this, a lot of the, their intellectuals are reacting to this. And so what did Fir'aun do? You know, Fir'aun, uh, he did what he did. We all know that he started killing the, the boys and he started killing the next generation. And so when you are uh, in parts of Europe, like parts of England and other parts, you know, you could see if you go to the hospitals, if there are in the in the in the uh, in the in the maternity section, you know, if there are ten babies, uh, majority of them will be Muslims. You know, and so this is a big concern for the people that are in Europe. They see Europe changing, and a lot of these white supremacist groups see America changing, and they feel they have to protect what was theirs and not let it change. So this is the first point. So this is the bigger picture. This is the bigger picture that has given more, uh, you can say, ammunition or more currency to the white supremacist groups. This has given more strength to them because they're like, look, they're taking all, all over. Uh, and now with Umar Ilhan being so vocal, you know, it gives them strength to speak against and to see the Muslim presence growing. It makes them concerned. And, and then there are other aspects that are going, with, going to go with that that I'm going to talk about. Um, but it's very important, uh, I think, that uh, regardless of what the situation is, that Muslims don't react anger with anger, because that's not the prophetic model. Nor is it the prophetic model to become victimized, because the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, when they were in Mecca, like Bilal was tortured, Thabab bin Ard was tortured, right? The companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they were tortured in Mecca, but they never let that torture victimize them. Right? They were able to stay above that level of victimization. And that is very important because if we're going to just react anger with anger, then we're not going to get out of the situation. We're not going to be able to fix our situation. We're just going to be reacting to them. And so we need to be in a, in a frame of mind where we're not victimized by what is happening around us. And, and again, what is happening around us is tremendous. Because behind uh, New Zealand, uh, the Al-Aqsa scene is going on right now with Gaza. Right? And then you have the situation in Yemen, and you have the situation in Syria, and you have the situation, the, 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 the tension between India and Pakistan, so on and so forth. So it's very important not to get victimized so that we can actually think properly and react properly. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about in, in one of the verses of the Quran where Allah talks about weapons, carrying weapons, Allah says, خُذُوا خِذْرَكُمْ Take your precautions. It's very important in this situation. And remember, this guy was a copycat. He was copying someone else. And right after a copycat situation, the chances of another copycat are also very high. Even though this guy took two years to plan this. He took two years to, to do what he did. It took, and, and then he was in New Zealand three months planning this, what he did. And you know what's interesting about New Zealand is the last place in the world the last place in the world that you would expect that something like this would happen is New Zealand. Right? But when Allah, when the time of death comes, it doesn't get postponed. Right? In the Zahir world, in the obvious world that we live in, there's one excuse or another excuse. But it's a sign for Muslims that Muslims are not safe in this time completely because who is the number one culprit? The number one culprit is the media. Because the media has allowed Muslims to become so demonized, dehumanized. And yuriduna liyutufi unur Allah. Allah talks about this about the mouth, right? The media. Yuriduna liyutufi unur Allah. They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouth. Yuriduna liyutufi unur Allah bi afwahim. Wallahu mutimun nurihi wa lawkari hal kafirun. But Allah will make perfect his light. He will complete his light. And in that sense, for all the dehumanizing that's been done against Muslims for the last, I don't know, 17, 18 years, and you have this whole generation that's grown up now hearing Muslims are terrible. You know, this guy that's 20-some years old, he grew up basically hearing how bad Muslims are. And Muslims have been dehumanized in, through the media to the masses, basically. And this is why they, how can you kill, those of you who saw the video, 
will know that it's not, you know, how does this guy do this? He does this because he doesn't see Muslims as humans. Because you can't, it's very hard to kill someone, uh, you know, just as an assault, unless you have dehumanized those people that are before you. And you know, the media is going, is, it it's acts as if it's an innocent bystander. It's not an innocent bystander. The media is the biggest culprit. And then behind the media, there are other, other aspects too, but the media is definitely the biggest culprit. You know, behind the, the thinking of the people and the fear of the people and the dehumanizing of the Muslims, the, the media plays a huge role. But, makaru wa makar Allah, wallahu khayrul makirin, today, even though, even though, you don't see that cry that if it would have been a Muslim, the amount of you haven't denounced this enough, you haven't given enough fatwas against this, you don't find the, the majority of the world or the international world yet standing up and condemning this, but the Prime Minister of Australia did. And so now here, for the first time, as the brother was saying, the first time that now you have everything that they had done for 17 years, almost, right? Everything they were doing, dehumanizing Muslims, dehumanizing Muslims. For the first time, something came in the news at this scale, at this level, where 50 people have died, where we actually get a sympathy card. We actually get a sympathy card, a little bit of a sympathy card. But it is also extremely, extremely important that Muslims, the parents, the parents, this is a good time to talk to your children about terrorism and to show to your children that terrorism doesn't have a religion. Right? Uh, uh, this is a good time to sit down with your children and explain to them that, look, there, there, there can be extremes in, in any, any side. But again, what I want to emphasize is, even though the media did what it did, it dehumanized uh, the Muslims, hurt the Muslims, and a whole generation has now grown up. And as a result, what is happening right now, and I've given a khutbah on this, a whole khutbah on this, if you remember where I talked about the the Southern Poverty uh, Center, where I was talking about hate groups on the rise. If you remember, I talked about this. Hate groups are on the rise. There are more than 3,000 hate groups right here in America. And they're even more extreme in Europe and Australia. They're even more extreme. And it is this hate towards Muslim is actually moving from Europe and from England towards the U.S. It is being transported from there to here. And this, and, and you know, the, the, the ill feelings uh, the, Ill, the negative feelings that people had about Muslims, you already had the media building it up, building it up, building up, and then you had Trump come along, and now that what was inside, they felt now they felt emboldened to express it by their, by their behavior, which is what is happening. And trust me you, from what the Prophet tells us, this is not, this is not the end, right? More days that it will be difficult are going to come to us. So inshallah, I will be uh, talking about that in my second part of the khutbah. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات جزاك الله إن الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره. ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله. Now I want to read to you some of the statements that were made by one of the senators in New Zealand, in Queensland. In Queensland, he starts by saying, "I'm utterly disappointed. I don't accept this." But now, then, what he says, however. He's talking about this event. However, while this kind of violent vigilantism is never justified, what it highlights is the growing fear within our community, meaning the people of New Zealand and Europe in general, both Australia and New Zealand, etc., etc., of the increasing Muslim presence. This is what he's saying. Even after this event, this is what he's saying. As always, left-wing politicians and the media will rush to claim that the causes of today's shootings lie in the gun laws or those who hold nationalist views. But all this is a uh, this all this is nonsense. 
The real cause of bloodshed on New Zealand streets today is the immigration program which allowed Muslim fanatics to, immigrate, to migrate to New Zealand in the first place. Let us be clear, while Muslims may have been the victims today, usually they are the perpetrators. Worldwide, Muslims are killing people in the name of their faith on an industrial scale. The entire religion of Islam, and then he goes on to criticizing Islam. This happened today. This happened despite what happened. And so if these are the politicians amongst them thinking, then imagine what the people on the street are thinking. Because the politicians are usually a little bit more, you know, compromising and thinking about how not to say extreme words. So imagine what the person on the street is thinking. And you know what's so interesting is this. The person's gun, that you looked at the picture of the gun and the writings on the gun, right? In the writings of the gun, one of the, the, the things that is written there is Vienna, okay? Uh, it's uh, Vienna, uh, 1683. Vienna, 1683. This is when the Ottoman Empire had one of the battles with Europe, okay? And he basically is m marking that date and that time as that, you know, we are continuing this fight. And in fact, those of you that have probably been reading about this, he was playing a song in his car that was a war song, basically, that now is the time, now is the time. Right? And this guy, he wanted to be known for what he did. He had a camera, right? He wanted to be known for what he did. And, 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 and then, you got to remember, the people who believe in these ideas, they're going to watch that video, and they're not going to see, oh, some monster. They're going to see a hero. They're going to feel this guy was a hero. This guy did what I would have liked to do. This guy did something I used to think about doing. Right? And he's going to be a hero. And what's that going to do? That's going to create copycats. That's going to create other people who want to do, who will want to do what he did. And he, in a sense, from a media perspective, from a social media perspective, with over a million views on his thing, he was successful in, in doing this and encouraging other people to do the same. He, had been, he has been successful from that perspective, that he created a video of his shootings in the two masjids and uploaded it and now everyone's watching it and the people that belong to these white supremacist groups, they're going to see that and they're going to be like, oh, now it's clear to them, oh, attack a masjid, right? It becomes even more clear what to do. This is almost like an instruction manual, what you can do to be like a hero. This guy didn't think he would be caught. Alhamdulillah, he got caught. Because he was acting the whole time like he wouldn't get caught. He got caught. But uh, he did upload that video of his. And then he quotes parts of the Bible against the Muslims and so on and so forth. Um, I want to uh, talk in the end about... Uh, when we come, it is very important to protect our masajid, and we should do it ourselves. And we should not rely on other people, because that, if we rely on other people, we could be falling for another agenda, which is that they use security to curb your civil rights. They're using, they use security, this, you need security, because you need security, therefore, the result is, you need to curb your civil rights. So we need to be careful of that, too. Okay. Now, as far as this guy, Fraser Anas, the guy who made all these statements, there's a, a, a petition out there to have him resign. They're trying to get like 50,000 signatures. That's good, but that's not going to help pe change people's minds and hearts. What we need to do is we need to look at what the Prophet would have done, right? And in this, I want to mention, it's very important for Muslims for the Imams in New Zealand, for the people in New Zealand, for the Muslims in New Zealand, despite what happened, that they need to sit with people like this. They need to talk to people like this. Return uh, the evil with the good. Maybe your worst enemy will become your best friend. You know, just taking legal action against someone doesn't change their minds and hearts. You, to change the minds and the hearts, and when you look at the prophetic model, you know, in Mecca, especially when the Muslims were weak, right? When Muslims were weak, the order of the Prophet was, Kufu aydiyakum, take all persecution and do not retaliate. Because the only way that you could 
engage the other person was being, by being nice. This is what the Prophet wanted, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He wanted the Muslims to be nice, to engage the others, so that when they're hurting you, you're doing du'a for them. So we need to keep this part in mind too, that we can't always be reacting anger with anger. We need to keep the prophetic model in mind. Um, the other thing I want to uh, talk about is that, uh, of course, uh, the lesson here is that death can come to us anytime, but also that when we come to the masjid, I want to talk a little bit about because the event, this event happened at the masjid. I have like less than four minutes left. This event happened at a masjid. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the intention of coming to the masjid. All of you should, or generally all Muslims should, you know, there's something in fiqh and, 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 and called bina'ul masjid, the making of the masjid, right? That when you come to the masjid, you are like a guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And you should come, not just like, you know, I'm just coming to the masjid because you are in the habit. Try to make it a habit to make an intention. I'm coming to the masjid to build the masjid, right? I'm coming into the masjid to do bina in masjid, to build the masjid, to be part of the masjid. And that means that you're, all, you're, you're not just coming just to like sit down and leave. You're coming to actually build the masjid. And so I just wanted that to be clear and that you can have that intention and that you have the, when you have that intention, then Allah puts more barakah in your coming here and being here. And so uh, again, uh, on the one side, you have what they are understanding to be a demographic jihad, right? Muslims are increasing in so much numbers. What can we do? We need to react to this. And then, like I talked about with with this idea, with this seeing the fear of the Muslim demographics on the one side, not just Muslims, but minorities on one side, and then on the other side, you know, when Trump comes there with anger and anger and rage and rage all the time, he emboldened these people, and now they have come out. And, and so now we need to be, and, and I want to mention here something very important before we finish, and that is that these groups, like the RSS in India, these uh, fundamentalist supreme, uh, I don't know if you've seen online the, n the level of weapons these white supremacist groups have. Have you ever been to a channel call or, or seen the program called uh, Doomsday Preppers? You've seen it? Doomsday Preppers? These people have weapons, they make Taliban look like a little boy. They look like any gangster look like, these people have so many weapons. I mean, I'm talking about rooms and rooms of ammunition and weapons, so much. They ha they're ready for war. They have been ready for war and they've been wanting war. These white supremacist groups, right? And so Muslims need to be cognizant of the situation that we're in and we need to make, you know, RSS, the, 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 uh, the right wing in, in India, what do they do? They do martial arts, they do, they, they learn how to use guns, they learn how to fight with the sticks, they learn, and, and the most passive group out of all the groups, the most, of course, targeted group is the Muslims. But in terms of standing up for ourselves and being ready for any crisis, we are the least prepared. We are the most comfortable with dunya because we are affluent. We're the most comfortable and in quote unquote, under the disguise of being civilized, we don't want a crisis. We don't want difficulty. We don't want a difficult life. But this is exactly what the Prophet said, that your state would be like, become like, like, uh, you love the world, you become comfortable in the world, and you dislike death. And so, we need to, you know, uh, I'll end with this point, it's very interesting. Imam Nikhaldun, he talks about uh, a cycle of, of people that come to the top of society and then go down. The people that come to the top in the beginning, like look at, uh, for example, George Washington, right? He was a general. He was fighting in the battles. He was in the trenches. Look at uh, any, any person who starts a nation. In the beginning, they do, they're in the trenches themselves. They're not living a comfortable life. They're living a difficult life. Prophet Muhammad lived a difficult life. Those people that start a movement, a, a nation, they are in the trenches. They're not used to living a comfortable life, and then they come on top. And then as time goes by, the people become more luxurious, they become more comfortable, and as they become more comfortable, those people on the ground who are challenging them, who are also not used to comfortable life, topple them, because they became too interested in becoming comfortable. This is where Muslims are today in a sense. We've become so 
comfortable that we are in denial, in denial. We are in denial of the challenges before us. We are in denial of challenges before us. Like I said, there has been a whole generation that has grown up for the last 17 years, every day in the media, they've been hearing how bad Muslims are. <coughs> that is not going to just be an event. That's going to have an act reaction. That's going to have an effect. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all the Muslims. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help uh, us to use the sympathy card we have right now to our full advantage. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true Muslims and uh, save us from the fitna of the jal. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasidin. Allahumma arhamna bil-Qur'an al-Azim wa ja'al ulana imama wa nuran wa hudan wa hudan wa rahma. Amin Allahumma amin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد I wonder how many people thought not to come today because of this event and that would be the attack of shaitan where shaitan says don't go to the masjid because something bad can happen right so that's there too فأقيم الصلاة Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.